Hey everybody, Scott Dowler here, back with another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. I'm going to be producing these on Fridays now as part of my Photoshop Friday, and I'm going to be working on Capture One videos for Capture One Wednesday. There will also be intermittent videos that'll pop in probably on Mondays or maybe over the weekend uh, from time to time, and those will be ones that are more photography related. So if I'm working in my Milwaukee-based studio or remotely, I may do ones on lighting, I might do something on posing, or maybe a behind the scenes shoot. It depends on what you guys would like to see, so please leave in the comments below what you would like. And if you like this video, please take the time to click on the like button. It means a lot to me. I would also like to take this time to relaunch my Patreon page. I've had it for a couple of years and really haven't done anything with it. And now I would like to turn it into the background support for this series. So there will be the PSD documents that I work on here. So if you'd like to download that Photoshop document and see how it's assembled or use it for reference, that'd be great. Uh, I will make them smaller though, uh, for a couple reasons. One, because a two gig file is no fun to download. And secondly, uh, a lot of these textures and things that I use have copyrights and I cannot upload a full-sized version of that texture. So I may have to get a little creative with how I do that uh, because I don't obviously want to wreck those copyrights. But if you want to see how the document's assembled, I do have to include them. So I'll find a nice way around that so that you can get those. So that will be on my Patreon page and I'll link that below. And again, I appreciate your support. So today we're going to work on color balance. So what we want to do is add things to an image to create a composition. And if all those images that we're combining together have different color you know, harmonies, we won't end up with something that looks realistic. And obviously selling the fact that something is going on and it all looks real is a big part of what we do in Photoshop. So uh, I want to do that here. So I'm gonna walk you through the process. And there's again, there's a lot of ways to do this, but I have my favorite way, and that's the one I wanna share with you today. Okay, in previous videos, you saw how I've expanded the background, and that's exactly what I'm going to do on this image. I just simply grabbed other pieces from other parts of the shoot, or she was standing perhaps, or uh, other poses, and kind of stitched it together. I decided I wanted a square composition for this, and so this image is now much larger than my camera's capable of creating because I added all that uh, headroom to it. So this was the actual frame that came out of the camera. I tend to crop pretty close as I want my megapixels of my camera working for me. And I know that I can always expand the canvas later, especially if it's blank like this. Very easy to do. Okay, so I want to add now these butterflies. These butterflies came from one of those huge packs of random stock images you can get for, you know, it's like 30,000 overlays for 80 bucks. And I probably, well, I made fun of those in the past, and I've probably used 60%, I guess, uh, of that overlay pack. The other remaining parts don't really mean anything to me, like fonts and so on. I don't really use any of that stuff. It turned out to be a pretty good deal because I use the butterflies a lot. I've used the bubbles, I've used feathers and other things in client work, which I obviously don't show on this channel. Uh, I will put a link to that down below. It's a pretty good deal, and I think there's a coupon code from a couple different sources that you can grab uh, to get it on sale, but it was a very worthwhile purchase. Uh, so what I did here is I simply put a mask on this, and you can see it's a super fancy mask. It just covers up some of the butterflies that did not make sense in this composition. So I haven't done anything else. Uh, so I just dragged it in here, put the mask on it, and now I need to color balance it. So we need to talk about the three things that make up parts of an image. The value, that's the black to white. We need to talk about the hue, which is you know your red, your green, your blues, and then your saturation, which is how much red or how much green or how much blue. We have to control all three of those things in order to make something look realistic. So make sure if you're shooting for composition that you know the lighting of your base as well as the lighting of the subjects you're going to be adding in it so they make sense. Color balancing is not hard. Light changing is difficult. Always know where you're gonna go, sketch it out, shoot for that composition, or at least find elements that may work. For example, these butterflies are lit pretty strong from one side. I could easily flip it the other direction and find a different butterfly to work on her finger. It's just a matter of working with the images I have, and this one happens to work out pretty well. By the way, I am gonna get rid of this butterfly because the depth of field for this butterfly does not make sense. If you notice, it has uh, blurry, but it's in her focus plane. So it would not be blurry, it should be sharp. So we're just gonna get rid of that. So depth of field is important. Uh, you wanna make sure that if they're closer to the camera and they're blurry, that really helps sell the illusion. What I want to do is create a black and white adjustment layer. So I'm gonna do that the way that I've told you to do it before. Pick any color gray, 
change the blending mode to any of the bottom three here, hue, saturation, or color. We'll just pick hue. And then look at this from a black and white perspective and decide whether or not it works. Does this look like it's a cohesive image and believable? Now what I want to do is add a level adjustment layer. And to do so, I need to make sure I click on my butterflies first. Otherwise, I'm adding the layer, the level adjustment to the color fill layer, which is not going to do anything. So I'll need to add my layer and then I need to alt click or option click so that this level is affecting only the butterflies. And then I can go in and I can start to mess with this. So um, I'm trying to match what I perceive to be the depth of shadow and the amount of highlight in her body in the butterflies. So by changing this around a bit, I can come up with something that I think looks pretty close to realistic. Like, I think that looks pretty good. Very, very slight adjustment. But now my brain is saying, hmm, yeah, those butterflies look like they're legitimately there. Now we're gonna save this layer because we're gonna need it in a second anyway. Uh, but we're gonna use it in a weird way. So go back to your blue layer here, or I call it blue, my butterfly layer. And I'm going to add the color balance. This is the tool that I prefer to use for this type of adjustment. You can also do it with curves, you can do it with hue and saturation, a bunch of ways to do it. Uh, but this is the way that I like to do my first pass because it is non-destructive, so we can always go back and change it later. So we need to be able to see what we're doing. If we're working on it this way, and I start at the shadows first, and I just kind of start doing this, I could probably per get a pretty good guess uh, as to what I want these butterflies to look like. I'm just kind of messing with this, but I found a way to kind of help myself visually and it's a bit disturbing to look at, but go in back to that gray layer we had before and change it to luminosity. And this is viewing the color of the image. Uh, now we can add a curve to this if we need to, again, a working curve. So one we really don't have any rules about, so we can kind of see what we're doing. And that may look disturbing, but you'll see what I'm doing with it in a second here. And then I go back and now I can start to work on my shadows. And what I wanna do is I wanna fiddle with these until this whole thing kind of seems like it has the same color palette. And I'm gonna move each slider kind of around. And I'm trying to say, I'm looking at the outline of the wings right now. The uh, outline is where the shadow, the darkest part of the butterfly is. And it's kind of orangey, right? And I'm gonna go to the mid-tone and again, I'm gonna kind of swing this around. This is the rest of the butterfly. And I'm looking for that purpley kind of color that is in her dress. And again, I'm trying to make sure that the outline of the butterfly isn't changing from that orange color that seems to be, you know, the most of her skin. And then the highlight would be the last part, it'd be the brightest part of the wings. Just trying to get that orange to kind of pop. So this, now these purple butterflies and the orange of her skin all look like they're kind of in the same thing. There's a few that are a little odd, but there's also some odd parts of her dress that are blue. So I'm gonna leave that. So let's turn off these two layers and see what we end up with. And those butterflies should look like they are part of this image. Now it may be a bit strong, the saturation of these butterflies, we haven't affected that yet. We've affected the value, that's the dark and light. We affected the color, and now we need to do the saturation. And for that, I would probably just use the standard hue and saturation adjustment. And if you're working on this layer still, all these should automatically clip to this layer. Um, if not, just clip it, you know, using the alt, uh, the alt key. So in here, I would just go and drop the saturation of the butterflies just a little bit, uh, especially this one. This is the one that seemed to be like kind of on fire to me. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> so maybe just a little bit. Now you can go and shift them all as a family as well if you wanted to. Um, but again, we took the time to do that the right way or what I'm perceiving to be the right way. So I'll probably just leave that alone. That looks really good to me. I think this looks like it's cohesive. So now let's do one last thing. Let's add in a background. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed one of my textures from one of my texture packs. I'll put a link to that below as well. And I wrapped it around the canvas, kind of like I did on one of my other tutorials. So you should already know how to do this. If you don't uh, find that previous tutorial, I'll link to it above and you can go ahead and watch that. So a very simple process. Uh, what I need to do though is make sure that it's not exposing the image more than it was originally. So you see she's a lot brighter and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go and grab a hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm gonna clip it here. And then I'm going to drop the lightness of this a bit and then test it by turning this on and off. In fact, you may drop the saturation to nothing as well. So I'm looking to see if her face changes and we can see that it is getting a little bit darker. So I'm gonna brighten this up just a bit. 
that's kind of my sanity check to myself is to say, do I have the right lightness for the background? And there we go. Not really changing her exposure much at all. And now I need to mask her skin because I don't want the modeled background to be on her skin. So we need to select her. So I'm just going to go back down to this background here. Um, but you'll notice that that doesn't have my butterflies on it. And I do want the butterflies to probably not have any modeled texture on them as well. So what I'm going to need to do, I'm going to turn this background off. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do a control alt shift E or command alt shift E. That is a clone stamp or stamp all visible. And that creates a one layer with everything that was visible when you made it. Uh, this is a super handy command. I've discussed it in the past and it is not available as a menu option. So you'll have to get to know it by heart, but it is very useful. So again, command alt shift E or control alt shift E. It's stamp visible and it's super handy. Uh, so once we have that, now we can go and use the handy select subject and see what kind of train wreck it produces. And it should be pretty good. And I'll tell you, we're going to be really forgiving with this because we don't need it to do a lot for us. I'm going to go ahead and do select and I'm going to hold on my shift key because I like to use the legacy version of select and mask. Discussed that in the past as well. And I'm just going to go down here and kind of get rid of the ground under there. I don't want that all uh, selected. And I do want to maybe do some around her hair here just a bit. And her fingers. And I'll see if it'll catching these butterflies. I don't know. And I'm not really worried about the butterflies uh, as much as I am her. Good enough. So once that's done, we'll get it back here. I do want to select save selection. I just call it one. I think you've seen me do that before. I'm going to go back between my background texture here and I'm going to hold on alt and it's going to mask her out. We notice if we turn this on and off that that background has added exposure to this image and we don't want that to happen. So we turn that hue and saturation layer back on to make sure that we've got it. And this looks very good. So now I can put my saturation back on. And now I can go and tweak this because this has to abide by the same rules. The other thing, it has to kind of all live in the same gamut. And I'm going to go the other way this way. If I went purple with this, I think we just have much, too much purple. So I'm going to go, I'm going to head this way. In fact, we could go really extreme, but I think uh, just kind of working with the flush tone here is a bit, a bit nice. So maybe something like that. And there we go. No, I don't like that. I'm wrong. I think that. That looks pretty good. And I like it, but I want more. So I'm going to, rather than double the the uh, texture, I'm going to just add any, really any one of these. I'm just going to grab curve, pin it. And then I'm going to change the blending mode of this to overlay, which will cause that whole thing to pop. Overlay and soft light. Soft light's kind of like overlay at half speed. So if I do something like that, and now I need to go back in here and adjust this uh, saturation just a bit much. There we go. I really like that. That looks great. Very happy. Hey, what if we did three? Let's do control J on that and make sure we pin it. And that's too much. Okay, well, worth a try. So there you go. That's how I added the texture, the butterflies, and made everything kind of cohesive. Again, if you don't like that, you can go and tweak it here. I'm also a big fan of going up, and I actually have a, a shortcut key bound to this. You want to go to view, flip horizontal, and kind of take a look at it again and see now that your brain is refreshed, is there anything about the image you would change? And a uh, fun little fact that people are used to seeing themselves in a mirror. You can't see yourself any other way. So people tend to prefer portraits where they're flipped uh, because that's how they see their face. And obviously we see that the other way. So fun fact, I'll play with that for a while. Uh, so I like to do this. I also like to tend to sit on them for like maybe half a day to a day and come back with fresh eyes again before I release it and see if there's any type of tone changes I would like to make and then go ahead and publish it. And as a favor, if you'd take the time to click the like button, it would mean a lot to me. And again, I'll put my links to my Patreon down below and I'll start to insert the names of those people who are supporting this into these future videos. So take care and I'll catch you next time.